Maristar gas package unit, no heat. Let's figure it out. So homeowner just turned the thermostat on heating. I'm gonna turn my meter to volts AC, get my test leads and check from ZW to the C, right? Make sure I'm on there, 27 volts. So we got a call to the board. What's the first thing the board should do? Board's got a relay to energize the fan motor, indoor fan motor, and the board has a relay to energize the inducer motor. This right here is where the inducer motor gets the power. See, it says single high and then low, but this is only a single speed inducer. See, it's only got two wires, so it's not two speed. There's a plug and uh, one wire of that plug goes to the line side of the contactor. Other wire for that plug goes up and over and then looks like it lands right there. See that black wire? All right, so we're gonna check from there to there, all right? Let me get everything set up. I got some alligator clamps. We got, we've got zero volts going to the inducer motor. You can see I'm clamped right there and then right there where those two wires are. Now we're gonna go right here because this should be our power right here, the other side of that line going to that motor. Now you could have checked right here, but I wanted to go ahead and bypass that because I know it's not getting power if it's not getting power to the, from, that, from that terminal right there. So check out the schematic real quick. Go over here, induced draft motor IND. Come down here, it says IND. There's the plug that you saw for the inducer motor. And then that white wire goes up, over, and then it's placed on the terminal, the line side of that contactor. And you can see that white wire. And then the other wire, black, just to confirm, up over here. And then right here, there's an empty terminal right here beside that black wire. And then there's two red wires that go back to the board to single high and low. All right. Next step, we're going to take and set my meter up here. I bet you we got a bad control board, but we're going to jump out that inducer motor, right? All right. So now that we have one lead here on this one side of that line. Oh, what just happened? What just happened? We got a... Oh, this is the problem. This is the problem, look at that. Unless it's the board, let me see. Hold on, okay. Let me get my meter lead, put it back in. All right, so you saw that inducer motor come on. All right, so it says seven volts. We're gonna check right here, where it says single high. It says, eight volts almost and then it goes away check this one right here zero but if we check l2 right we got the voltage right we're just not it's not closing the contact to go here unless there's a well no it's got to be the board because it just came on hold on Okay, it just, all right, so I'll tell you what, we will take this wire here off, like this. Oh, whoops, board's gonna come off. Those are on there. All right, let me get some needle nose. All right, so I took this wire off, right? Because whenever this relay closes, this wire connects with one of these wires and that's what sends power to that inducer motor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and bypass that relay. I wanna be very careful when you do this. See? Got that on there. Inducer motor's running. That means next step, pressure switch should close. Safety's close. You get a spark, because this is spark ignition. And that comes from here, unless we've got an issue. One, two, three. One, two, three, what's happening with the one, two, three? Uh, pressure switch. All right, pressure switch is still not closing. Interesting. 
take off the tube, close it back, maybe the pressure switch was stuck closed because there's no code now. didn't go all the way across that means burners could be dirty so probably need to clean the burners I'm gonna let it light up one more time and see I know there was some new gas line done so it could be that this has not been the air has not been bled out of the line there we go so we have a bad control board it looks like I hope you understand how I troubleshoot the board there and trace the wires. Let me know if you need more help, and I'll do more videos. Come on. You can do it. If you haven't seen my video on gas heat training, definitely check out that video. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Oh, we got a code again. One, two, three. What? Cursor switch is still not closing? Okay. Not a lot of air. Coming out. Can we hear the pressure switch open though? Yep, I heard it open. It's closing, pressure switch is closed and I can hear it close. Now, if the contacts are closing, I don't know, let me see. All right, it's working now. So, find a good common, right? There's the ground, so that's common, right? And then, I'm gonna, we're gonna check across the pressure switch. Of course, it's closed now, but just wanted to do this check. All right, let's see, this side, 25 volts. All right, and then, the other side 25 volts so it's closing 24 volts is going through the switch but the heat just went off and it didn't sound good either either so we need to set the gas pressure we need to make sure the gas pressure is set correctly let's go get my uh, uh, manometer all right shut the gas off open up the outlet screw all right, take the manometer, put the tube on the outlet screw. Come on. Turn the manometer on. Come on, buddy, you can do it. I know it's raining, you'll be okay. Come on, turn on. What the heck, piece of junk. All right, don't you dare do that to me again, brother. Not when I'm out here in the cold trying to get something done. Are my, is my battery going dead? Is that what's going on? Could be. Come on, light up, let's go. We'll go ahead and take off the cap for the adjustment screw. Make sure the gas valve's back on. I want to check the inducer motor, see how much voltage is going to it. Now we can get to that adjustment screw. Come on. Come on, let's go. Don't tell me there's another code. No, there's another, not another code. Code, so, okay. All right, 3.5. Well, that's pretty good, actually. So I'm gonna lower it just a tad. Get it? <laughs> just a tad to 3.49. So everything should work once we get that board replaced. Always screw the outlet screw back in. Please do not forget. 
All right, let's check the voltage to the inducer motor and just see what it is. Let's turn this back on. All right. All right, so we got 252 volts going to that inducer motor. So we need to replace this control board. All right, I took that red wire off that I got off the L2 terminal. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on. What? It's working. Wow. So intermittent problems. Intermittent. Let's get a new board for this thing. Let's see what else we got going on here. Igniter on the left, flame sensor on the right. We got three burners. Let's see what happens. Spark, light up, go back out. That does not last very long. Interesting. Got the new board. Look at that. CNT 03457 ignition control two stage direct spark. And we've already got a little bit of an issue. One of the legs is not on there. Really? And it's broken. You can see that. Missing piece. All right. Let's get to work. Placing a board is super simple. I'm basically going to take and just pry the board up and then I'll take and place the other board right here behind it and then we'll just wire for wire. Take one wire off here and put one wire on there and then one after the other until it's done and then we'll fire it back up and see what happens. New board has been installed and I also took one of the legs from the old board and put it on the new board. That way it's not leaning against the cabinet and touching. Now to plug it back in, get it back working. By the way, don't do this. Do not install the gas line in front of the disconnect. It's no bueno. No bueno, guys. You see that? Come on, man. Come on, man. All right, let's check this thing out now and see what she's doing. Now before the inducer motor was not coming on, of course. And then new problem, lights for a second goes back out. Sometimes you get one thing fixed and then something else messes up. But it looks like we're in good shape now. I love it. Now, I really thought up here at the top that there was a problem here, right? Because this is where I touched and that inducer motor magically came on. But these terminals uh, that they land on, the wires, they're connected and there's nothing wrong. But sometimes it can just be a wire. So sometimes you gotta cut the female spades off and you gotta put a new spade on. So, but this one was a bad board and it's pretty unusual, but you know, you never know. I mean, this unit's not even that old. If you want to learn more about gas heat troubleshooting, I've got a video called gas heat training. Check it out. It's on my playlist, HVAC tips for technicians. If you're entering the winter season and you need more information about working on gas furnaces or gas package units. You can also type in gas heat training Taddy Digest on Google or YouTube and that video will come up. It's about 30 minutes. Spend the time. I cover different scenarios like if this does this, then check this. If this does this, check this. All that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed today's video, I hope you learned something. If you did like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you learned something, tell me what it was down in the comments. If you've ever worked on this type of equipment or had this problem, comment below. Let me know what the problem was. What? Let me know what you did to solve it. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.